the human mind, once you say you can't have something, that's all you envision. So I don't want to put you in that position. Hey, it's A back on your screen with another one. Hope you're all well. As you can tell from the title, today we're talking about high vibrational foods. I haven't done a nutrition video on this channel in a long, long time. I'm really excited to talk about this topic with you, especially since it's been a minute since I did the ABCs of nutrition. If you know, you know. Those are a throwback series that's no longer on this channel. I got click happy one day and started deleting over 200 videos. Kind of regret it now in hindsight, but it's whatever. Let's stay on topic today. You came, you clicked because you wanted to learn about foods that are gonna boost your mood, your energy levels, what's good for you. If you ever had the itis or you have a lot of sleepy days lately like me, these are the foods that you wanna up the ante on so that you feel more energized throughout the day. I'm gonna break this down into four, maybe five categories depending on time. There's way more categories than this, but I figured if anything, we can do a part two, let me know and we'll go with that. But let's just do the basics to begin. I want you guys to guess what's the number one category I'm gonna share with you. I'll give you a second. If you guess fruits, you guessed it right. I'm sure all of you guys could figure out. I was gonna start off with produce. Fruits are really good because they're high in antioxidants, vitamins A and C, things you need to keep your body strong. The thing about high vibrational food, it's not just the energy that you get at it, which hopefully keeps you stabilized at 62 to 75-ish megahertz. What it does when your body is processing it. The reason why I chose fruits to start with, because it's the most basic and obvious, but also a lot of fruits are high in fiber or things that are gonna help with inflammation. Anything that helps with your digestive system, helps ease the process of breaking down foods, is gonna be good for you. On the other hand, of course, processed foods, things that come in plastic wrap or cans, that type of thing, your body's gonna have to work harder, i.e. eat up more energy to break down and sometimes discard because there's not that much nutritional value in it. And that's why you might feel drained from Jollibee's versus from having some berries. Now, don't get me wrong. I love me some Jollibee's, some Popeye's. I'm, if you've seen the vlogs, you know. Your girl likes to go out and eat. When I'm at home, I try to balance out throughout the day, not just a cheat day, but throughout the day, if I'm gonna have dinner tonight out, let me eat really clean throughout the day. But we'll talk about that either later on in this video or another video. Fruits basically have everything you need. I would never recommend doing a fruit cleanse. I tried to do a juice cleanse for two days. If you've ever tried it before, you know how that goes. But what's so great about fruits is they're very powerful when it comes to powering you up. Think berries, whether you're blueberries, strawberries, raspberries, black currants, or you can go for in-season fruits. I'm not a big proponent of organic food. We'll talk about it another time. I know it's gonna be very polarizing because a lot of people who have the same degree as me have different ideas about organic. I will say it is very, very important to make sure that you have different types of dietary fiber in the form of fruits to really help process other foods along the way. Moving on from fruits, the next very obvious category would be veggies. I mean, I don't know if it was 2010 or 11 where Canada's food guide changed from fruits and veggies to veggies and fruits. No one even noticed that change. But the reason why they swapped it around is because veggies are more important in your what seven to ten a day versus fruits because of the nutrient value and its ability to help cleanse out the digestive system like i said with fruits it's very essential that when you're consuming something it's not just for the energy that is burned consumed while breaking it down or received from processing it but also the cleansing effects or other benefits that happen while this food is flowing through your digestive tract. The great thing about greens is that they offer a different biodiversity in your gut. They say it takes about seven to 10 days. I think it takes a little longer to change and flip over the biodiversity of your gut. We'll talk about that in another video because a lot of people want to know about the gut, bloating, how to prevent it, all that good stuff. But for the sake of today's video, dark leafy greens. I hate rapini, but I eat it from time to time because I know the benefits of it. I much prefer romaine lettuce or kale in my smoothies or spinach. And that's another trick. If you don't like eating veggies, find a way to make it work for you. When I worked at a middle school, I would sneak it into the lasagna, into the pastas. I'd even make quesadillas packed with veggies with cheese because kids can't tell when there's cheese on top. I'm not a big proponent of dairy. Again, another subject for another day. 
But if you're someone who's trying to introduce healthier foods, because it is after all a healthy eating lifestyle, it is a process and a journey. You're going to have to find ways to incorporate it until you can tolerate it. There's foods 10 years ago that I couldn't stand that my palate is now changed to maybe not so much like or love, but I can tolerate it in a way that I was just like, this is disgusting. I took the yuck out of it to make it okay. We're moving to yum, but we're not quite there yet. So that's a really good way to help you ease into eating healthier and cleaner. Category three, nuts. I love nuts. Seeds I'm warming up to, hemp hearts are something really good to sprinkle on top of a smoothie or a salad. I sometimes put flax into my pasta sauce just to give it a little extra zhuzh. These types of things add proteins, omega-3s, other essential nutrients that you need on the daily that you may not be getting, especially if you're on the road to recovery or trying to become healthier with your eating habits. These are really good because they also help with hormones. I watched a couple high vibrational food videos just to see the tempo, the temperature of what's out there, and no one really talks about the importance of having foods and something else that we'll add at the end of this video to balance your mood. So much of what we eat impacts our mood and our mood impacts our emotions, which impacts our energy levels throughout the day. And as a woman, especially, because you know how that goes, it's very important to have your hormones at a balanced level, making sure that you're monitoring if you have thyroid issues, that you're seeking professional help. There's so much there. Again, I don't wanna go off too deep in any direction, so if you want a dedicated video on something like hormones and food, let a girl know. All you need to know for the sake of today's video is that nuts are another thing that are really good. They can also sometimes, not all the times, because as much as I'm not big on organic, I'm also not big on veganism, which is gonna be very controversial. But what I will say is if you do wanna get additional proteins, you can get them from nut butters or whole nuts or lightly roasted nuts. Seeds can be a moderate source of protein, although when I usually add seeds to something, it's for a different benefit. Okay, we're doing good on timing. I might be able to add three ways to incorporate high vibrational eating into this video. We'll see. The fourth thing is fermented food. This one is a love-hate for me because I'm not about that kimchi life. No, 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 no. But I don't mind yogurt. Even though I'm not big on dairy, I don't drink cow's milk. I think it's gross. It's oat milk and almond milk all day, every day. It's very important to have fermented foods in your daily regimen, especially if you're on your cycle, if you're emotional. You know what, just especially anytime. Just have it every day. The reason why I say that is because, again, gut bacteria is, it's almost like your second brain and what goes on in your gut will affect how your mind is. And the more your body is trying to process, process food or whatever you're going through, that's why they say you can feel it in your gut or your intention is in your gut. You know that saying, I have a gut feeling? It's because your guts do have a big part to play in how you're feeling. They may not have meant it literally like so, but it's very important to know that when it comes to keeping your floor and your gut balanced, I don't believe in good and bad anything, good and bad bacteria, good and bad cholesterol, but it's an easy way to describe what's going on. You wanna make sure there's a balance of good and bad bacteria in your floor because that will impact and impede the absorption rate of nutrients and thus infect, yeah, infect, even though that was a Freudian slip, but also impact how you derive energy from certain foods. If there's too much going on, the bacteria is gonna yam up all the nutrients. Wait, let me not use cream. <laughs> let me say that properly. If you have too much of a certain type of bacteria, it will consume energy and thus drain you. So having fermented foods will keep that balance in place. If you can't do the kefir or the yogurt or the kimchi, or there's something else that I remember I tried and I'm like, never again. It's not tempeh, it's something else. But if I remember it while editing, I'll put it over here. There's a lot of fermented foods out there, okay? It's not really big in Caribbean diets, I've realized that, but there are ways to, like for example, I have coconut kefir in the morning. It's not bad, it's kind of like a yop. You know yop back in the day, you used to have it as a kid on the playground. That's a really good way to balance out the bacterial composition. Or if you prefer, you can pop a probiotic pill. There's so many on the markets. There's ones for anything. I was gonna go through a list, but we'd be here all day. You can definitely find a specific probiotic for you 
Find the ones that are refrigerated. Yes, they are more expensive, but that's because the refrigerator's keeping the cultures alive. You need to have that. And I think you need at least 10 billion cultures. I always say natural first. Supplements is just if for whatever reason in your diet, you can't get something, whether due to an allergen, a preference, if you have a certain dietary restriction, whatever it may be. But if you can, always seek out what you need from the food first. Foods have this magical way of having components in them, properties that will help absorb different nutrients. If you have, for example, let's just say yogurt, there's gonna be magnesium and calcium, and calcium and magnesium help each other when it comes to building your bones, and they're also good with phosphorus to help with cellular synapses. There's a lot going on in my brain. I can't believe I remember all of this. I graduated a decade ago. I'm glad that it stuck because that was a lot of schooling and a lot of money. But there are so many things when it comes to nutrition that it's like, wow, everyone needs to know this. Not just someone who decided to specialize in it because this can affect and change your life. Let me not go on my soapbox. Continuing with number five, spices. I wanted to wrap up with this today because it's so overlooked and it's insane. I learned this kind of off on my own after graduating just because I wanted to get into the holistic side of nutrition. Turmeric, ginger, cayenne, cinnamon, black pepper, cloves, maybe not all together, but I've done that before. Depends how you do it. it. It won't be that bad depending on how you do it, but something like a fireball or golden milk latte, chef's kiss i am telling you that is a game changer whenever i'm feeling lethargic under the weather like i'm gonna catch a cold or i have a cold having a fireball which is cayenne pepper lemon turmeric ginger yo it burns going down but it's solving a problem just like honey is really good as an antiseptic it's not technically antiseptic it's antibacterial but you know what i'm saying there's so many foods out there that have a natural way of solving a common problem. If you go out and seek it, and a simple Google search will help you. But what I love about spices, especially since I love my food flavor, is that it's a great way, again, to help with inflammation, which is a cause of so many diseases and disorders. And if you don't have a disease or disorder, it's good to control and reduce inflammation to prevent them. And also because whenever your body is dealing with a response, like inflammation, it's kind of a state of shock. It might be a mild state of shock, but it's still your body trying to alleviate a situation or deal with something. Just like when you eat a very heavy meal, the reason why you feel drained is because your body's working hard to break down whatever it is that you've consumed. So by having something with spices, whether it's like a latte, like I said, with turmeric in it, or if you spice up your food like me, it is the easiest way of help boost your immunity, help with digestion, and help reduce inflammation. Since we did really good on time, I'm just gonna mention three important keys that I think are just essential as the five groups that we talked about today. The first is being mindful when you eat. I am very <laughs> bad at this. I've been trying to work on this. And I think a lot of us get into the routine where our life is so go, go, go. So eating mindfully is an afterthought. What does it mean to eat mindfully? It's to sit and enjoy the flavors, the bite, the crunch, just the nourishment. Knowing that if you were born in a different part of the world, in a different body, in a different life, you may not be able to enjoy the food as readily or as healthily as you can today. Taking that in raises your vibration. It's called gratitude. And we talk about it a lot on this channel as it relates to my eye disease. And a lot of you guys who are on that struggling with star guards journey with me already know. So gratitude is key and being grateful and mindful when you eat can really change and evolve how food works in you. I'm not big on manifestation. I should put that out right now because I know I'm saying a lot of woo-woo-ish. I like to mix spiritual with science. That's just me, it's always been me. And that's why the second thing I would say is not just being present, but setting the intention. They say when you eat a meal that's made with love, it tastes different. It definitely does hit different. I can tell you so many stories, but I'll save that for Patreon or something, of having a meal made for me by a friend, a loved one, a family member, and it just, it's different. It's different. And you know it's different, because if you made a meal for a friend with love versus one in a rush for yourself, 
it's just not the same. And that's because you're putting energy into it. First law of physics is energy can neither be created or destroyed. That goes not only for the energy you're getting from the food as you eat it, but the energy you put into producing the meal, to cooking, steaming, eating it raw, blending, sauteing, whatever you do, you're putting energy into it. So be intentional with that. The last thing is not really a eating habit, but rather perhaps one of the most important things. They say the body is 70% water. I wonder if that statistic went up since I was in school. It might be 80 or something. Well, whatever it is, we're made up of a lot of water, okay? Which is why you need to get your water up. Alkaline water is best. Natural spring water is best. But if you can't get it, get a water filter. <sighs> I sip on these a lot during the day. It's kind of help my skin clear, but there's another secret to that that I'll share in another video because I could drink all the water I wanted all day and I was gonna have acne. There was no way around it. For as fluid as water is, I consider it a vessel. It can hold things that you need in your body to help you flush out toxins, to balance your hormones, to help push things out, to help with the reabsorption of things. It's just, this is everything. I know it's so simple and it's so basic and every single nutrition video you'll ever watch in your entire life trumps water and it's for good reason. I wish I knew earlier on in life the health benefits of water because growing up I hated it. Give me a ginger ale or a ginger beer or some fruit punch or orange juice. And I mean everything in moderation. One thing you'll know about me is I'll never tell you to cut anything out completely. I feel like the human mind, once you say you can't have something, that's all you envision. So I don't wanna put you in that position. But what I will say is what my first year professor said to me that stuck out more than anything else. Variety and moderation is key. You cannot go wrong as long as you have variety and you're moderate with it. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you want to see a part two or you want me to take a different direction with nutrition, let a girl know down below and that's what we'll do. If you haven't already subscribed for more, there's a lot on this channel. I mean a lot. So if this is your first time seeing me, thanks for stopping by and making it to the end of this one. If you want more, you can check out my Patreon or become a YouTube member, especially if you have Stark's disease. I made a nutrition video specifically for those living with the eye disease. And until next time, stay safe. Stay sane, stay blessed, love and later. Thing about hyperbation, why can't I say the word? The thing about hyperbation of food, the thing about hyperbation,